I was going through old family photo albums one rainy afternoon, reminiscing about my childhood and the good times we had. Each photo brought back memories of birthdays, holidays, and vacations. But then I came across a photo that made my blood run cold. In the picture, I was a toddler, sitting on my mother's lap at my third birthday party. My dad was standing behind us, smiling. But there was someone else in the photo, someone I didn't recognize. A tall man, dressed in a dark suit, stood in the corner, staring directly at the camera. His expression was blank, almost emotionless. I flipped through more pages and found him again, in different photos from different occasions. He was always in the background, always staring at the camera. I asked my parents about him, but they didn't know who he was. They insisted that no such person was at any of the events. I became obsessed, going through every photo album we had. The man was in all of them, always in the background, always watching. It was as if he had been part of my life all along, but no one else remembered him. One night, I woke up to the sound of rustling paper. I turned on the light and saw the photo album open on my desk, pages flipping on their own. I got out of bed and approached it cautiously. The pages stopped on a photo I hadn't seen before. It was of me, in my bedroom, asleep. The tall man was standing next to my bed, looking down at me. I felt a chill run down my spine. How could there be a photo of me sleeping? taken from inside my own house. I backed away, terrified. Suddenly, the room grew cold, and I heard a faint whisper. You can't escape me, the voice said. I turned around and saw the tall man standing in the corner of my room, just like in the photos. His eyes were locked onto mine, and a sinister smile slowly spread across his face. From that night on, the tall man appeared not just in the photo albums, but in my dreams, and sometimes even in the reflections of mirrors and windows. No matter where I went, he was always there, watching, waiting. I burned the photo albums, hoping it would end the nightmare, but it didn't. The photos reappeared, charred and blackened, with the tall man still staring out from the corners. It was then I realized that he wasn't just a part of my past, he was a part of me and there was no escaping him. One night, I woke up to find the tall man standing at the foot of my bed. He leaned in close, his breath cold against my face. You belong to me now, he whispered. I bolted upright in bed, drenched in sweat, my heart pounding. The room was empty, but the feeling of his cold breath lingered. I knew I couldn't go on like this. I had to find a way to rid myself of him. The next day, I went back to the attic and searched for anything that might explain the photos and the tall man. After hours of rummaging through old boxes, I found an old journal belonging to my great-grandmother. Flipping through the pages, I discovered that she had experienced something similar. Her entry spoke of a mysterious man appearing in her photographs, haunting her dreams, and slowly driving her mad. Her final entry was a desperate plea for help. He won't leave me alone. I fear for my life and for those who come after me. If you're reading this, beware the man in the photos. He is relentless and will stop at nothing to claim you. My hands trembled as I read her words. I felt a mix of fear and determination. If my great-grandmother had faced this horror, maybe she had found a way to fight back. I needed to know more. I took the journal to a local historian, someone who specialized in old legends and paranormal events. After explaining my situation, she agreed to help. We spent hours going through old records and stories, trying to piece together any information about the tall man. Finally, we found a reference to an ancient curse. The man in the photos was said to be a spirit trapped between worlds, feeding on the fear of those he haunted. The curse can only be broken by confronting the spirit and severing his connection to the physical world. The historian handed me a piece of paper with an incantation. You have to recite this in front of a mirror at midnight, she said. It's dangerous, but it's your only chance. That night, I set up a mirror in my living room and waited for midnight. As the clock struck twelve, I stood in front of the mirror, my reflection barely visible in the dim light. Taking a deep breath, I began to recite the incantation. 
The room grew colder with each word, and the air felt heavy. My reflection started to change, morphing into the tall man. His eyes glowed with malice, and a sinister smile spread across his face. You cannot banish me, he hissed. I am a part of you now. I continued to recite the incantation, my voice shaking but determined. The tall man's image flickered, and I felt a surge of strength. I focused all my fear and anger into the final words of the incantation. Suddenly the mirror shattered, and a deafening silence filled the room. I collapsed to the floor, gasping for breath. When I looked up, the pieces of the broken mirror were scattered around me, but the tall man was gone. For the first time in weeks, I felt a sense of peace. The whispers were gone, and the oppressive presence had lifted. I gathered the pieces of the mirror and buried them in the backyard, hoping that would be the end of it. Days turned into weeks, and the nightmare ceased. I no longer saw the tall man in reflections or photos. Life slowly returned to normal, and I began to believe that I had truly banished him. But one night, as I was going through my phone, I found a photo I didn't remember taking. It was a picture of my bedroom, and there in the corner was the tall man, his eyes glowing and a smile on his face. A chill ran down my spine. I realized that while I might have broken his immediate hold, he wasn't truly gone. He was waiting, lurking in the shadows, biding his time until he could return. And so, I live with the constant fear that one day, he will come back. I can only hope that when that day comes, I will be ready to face him again. Until then, I watch the shadows and listen for whispers, knowing that the man in the photos is never truly gone.